I'm going to go ahead and start and if Diane joins us, great, but we certainly have enough for the meeting. Um, thank you, everyone. I appreciate you all being willing to do another meeting. We ended up with a few wonderful projects that um, need attention. So um, that's great. I was going to start with the January 24th minutes, which um, Mark did a great job typing up. Does every, has everyone had it? I can put them up on the screen, but everyone may have already looked at them. Yeah. Does anyone want them put up or? Yeah. Does anyone mm -hmm. want to make a motion to? Um, Mary had some good edits that, that I incorporated. Has presented. Thank you, Mark. Yep. Yeah. I, I, the change I had was that Carolyn Brennan had been trying to work on the Russell Street School Project and just hadn't gotten with the building committee um, moving ahead, but she's trying to get figures for even just mothballing it to keep it kind of at least standing until the town does decide what it wants to do with it. Um, but that's still very much in process, but she, she has, it's on her, you know, it's in her radar and she is trying to work on it. So. Um, Dude, I'm sorry, did we have a motion to accept them? I move we accept them. Uh, the minute as presented. Um, Is there a second? I'll second if no one else. Oh, Amy did. Okay, good. Amy seconded. Uh, Thank you, Amy. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 <laughs> Thank you, Cassandra. All opposed? It's unanimous. All right. Thank you, Mark. Those are just excellent. Um, quick update on the treasurer's report. I think this is easiest just to share because um, <clears throat> I always hope I'm sharing the right thing. Sorry. <laughs> I think I have it open twice. Um, we don't mind seeing your cat pictures <laughs> or your well, credit card bill. Right. <laughs> so um, hopefully you're all looking at the current stats as of 315. So here's our um, open space that has 121,000, historic 45, housing 133. We set aside 500. So general has a million 724. Um, for 2,524 available. And then we also have money already approved. Um, we're, we're doing the 50,000 um, set aside and we're taking back money that was extra, mostly from the cemetery updates. So we have um, these balances in the set asides. If we approve everything that we've already approved for the ATM, plus what's coming up tonight, um, we can take it out of open space and all out of historic, and we'll still have money in the set asides and still two million three twenty one available for future projects. One thing to point out is um, we did collect about another seventy thousand in the surcharge with the February real estate tax bills, and we still have about another seventy thousand to collect um, with the May real estate tax bills. So we certainly. Um, before you take into account earnings in ups and downs, we've, so this will certainly be our best year ever for um, CPA collections. So that's all I've got with that. Um, so before we did the APR, I just wanted to take just a few minutes. Um, we had Carolyn Brennan, um, Brennan and, and Jennifer James set up with Shyla and um, Gary Pellisier from com the Conservation Commission, and they invited me into just a quick rundown of the APR, how it works and, and what it does. And I thought it'd be helpful for us to, I just did up some notes, I thought it'd be helpful for us to go over it. I know some of you know a lot about it and some, you know, might, might find something of this useful. Um, so APR is Agricultural Preservation Restriction, and it basically restricts a property um, to resale to fair market agricultural value, and it, res it restricts the resale to a viable farmer. So if somebody puts their land under APR, 
they're basically now get the difference between what the market value is, if it was building lots or just non-restricted, and the value of what it is now is agricultural land. So they receive that money now, but the property forever is has this restriction on it and it's on the deed. Um, to be eligible, th there's criteria includes, um, you need at least five acres that are contiguous. Um, you have to have a certain amount, not much of gross commercial sales. It has to be devoted to agriculture or horticulture for at least the two immediately preceding tax years. And it has to be at least 50% primed soils. So the one, the West property has a lot of trees, but it also has a lot of fields. Um, so the APR funding um, allows 17,000 per acre average. It used to be 10,000, they got it up to 17,000. So it obviously isn't only building lots because um, building lots in Hadley are a lot more than 17,000 per acre. Um, it can be exceeded if it's a critical resource up to 34,000 per acre. So maybe watershed or I'm not sure what critical is. Um, and 50% of the, um, the APR is paid for by the federal government through their NRCS, the Natural Resources Conservation Service. Now the NRCS actually has a spot in an office in Hadley right by um, Gregory's Bakery on Route 9. Um, and, but they, they pay for half as long as they approve the APR. And then the Massachusetts Department of Agricultural Resources, MDAR, who is the one, Ron Hall from that met with us, they pay the rest except for what they require the town to match. So usually 90, 95% of the APR is paid for between the federal and the state governments. Um, and then they ask the local source for five to 20% of the total amount. And it can be paid for by the town, by a nonprofit land trust, or the landowner can agree to take, to sell it for less, you know, to not get that 10% to, and then they can get a tax break on their taxes for that donation. Um, and they can take up, the landowner can have a donation credit up to 75,000 and it's a credit on the taxes. And if they don't have that much in taxes, they can get a refund check at the, you know, when, when that time comes. Um, the, the best to get that 5% only from the town, they do want the town to have a right to farm bylaw, which Hadley does have. And if a survey is needed, the MDR pays half and the landowner pays half and the, and the MDA, MDAR pays for the title. Um, if the federal government doesn't, if this doesn't fall under the federal government, they won't pay their 50%. The town has to pick that part up. And I don't think we've ever been approached to do that, but, um, so one thing that the, they, the MDAR will do an appraisal and it's only good for a year. And if it goes more than a year, then they do another appraisal. However, if the value of the appraisal has gone up, the state and federal portion does not go up. So if the value of the appraisal goes up, they want the town to pick up the difference or the landowner to still accept the lower amount. Um, they said for timing, which is kind of amazing. But anyways, for a timing, the application deadline to the offer. So you turn in your application like June 30th, the, it takes six months to even get an offer back to the landowner. And, um, and then if the landowner accepts the offer goes to the NRCS for them to pay their share. So the federal part, and that vote can take 10 months. And then from that final vote to completion of the MDAR due diligence, making sure it is what it says it is, making sure it's a legal title, making sure all of that, that can take eight months. And then from that point of view, from the due diligence to the closing can be four to another 12 months. So the whole process can take up to three years. Um, and we've seen that because some of the money that's approved um, for, I think it's Grilinski and Handrich, and it was approved, um, 2021, that's still not spent yet. It's still, they're still finalizing everything. Um, so that's, and they also, part of what I think the town does is the quality of the soils, is their development. They want to know single family building permits um, in the last five years and they rank them. So just because you apply doesn't mean you'll get it. They have to feel that it's, it's really a valuable, um, a valuable thing to put an APR on. Um, 
Let's see. And then once done, there is ongoing stewardship, often by the town or a land trust to make sure they do a baseline survey and then they do check to make sure that people aren't using it in ways that they shouldn't. Um, they said that you might get a one day special permit for a wedding, or you might be able to get a permit for a storage facility that's not agricultural. You can build a barn if it's for you know machinery or animals that would fall under the APR, but you can't do it to store a boat in, for example. Um, so recently Hadley has been typically covering the town's portion with half from the CPA and half from the TDR, which is the transfer development rights. If a, bill, if a business one is building a property, a project uh, um, business and they are short on their parking spaces, they can put money into this TD, this transfer development rights and maybe need less parking spaces, but then this funds are available to preserve land somewhere else in Hadley. And, and Mark or somebody else might be able to explain that better, but that's kind of um, a little bit about the TDR. So the Conservation Commission first votes on approving the APR from their point of view and also how much they wanna put into the TDR. And then um, they apply, the Conservation Commission applies to the CPA for the balance of what the town needs to do. Um, and then those warrants are voted on at town meeting. So, um, so that's kind of a rough, <laughs> rough going through of the APR. So with that said, um, we've got the APR um, for the West. Right. And so this is on South Maple Street and it's kind of um, part of the woods part is next to Tom West's house, if anyone knows where that is. A lot of it's woods and then a few houses are carved out. Um, and then there's the agricultural, you know, on the other and bookending the woods. Um, and it is 57 acres. And Shaila did a nice job of um, putting together reasons why it, it fits into um, Hadley's goals and long range planning and, and everything else. Um, Could we have so Shaila quickly introduce themselves? Yes. Shaila, if you'd like to introduce yourself. Thank you, Andy. Uh, well, hi, thank you so much for hosting this meeting tonight to talk about the APR and um, it's nice to meet everybody. I don't think that I've met most of you yet. So hi, uh, my name is Shaila. I've been the conservation staff member since October, um, but I'm only in two days a week. So it's been, you know, six months, but not really in terms of full work weeks. Uh, and it's, yeah, uh, I'm, this is my first APR. So this is a fun learning experience for me. And and when I appreciate your help on this as well, um, on both ends here, you get <laughs> the double perspective. Um, yes, yeah, and I'm just happy to be keeping the legacy of Hadley going here. <laughs> yeah. Do you wanna talk about the APR application or would you like me to, or? Well, I was actually thinking maybe it would be beneficial to share um, the kind of screen grab of where it is on the map so that sure. folks can orient themselves. And the panel that I had sent, I think it was the second page, shows the existing APRs that are located nearby to get a sense of the connectivity of agricultural land uh, in the area. So here's, I don't know if you can see my cursor. Yep. Um, here's the spot right here. So across the street, the, um, the same landowner, and then across the street that that goes against to the west there, that is the same uh, property. And then to the north as well, um, Arthur West has some APR. I think that they have maybe over 250 acres already secured in the APR. Um, so they're really dedicated <laughs> folks over there. And I think this would be a great opportunity for them to have that connectivity with the one that's already protected across the street. And I'm not sure who owns the parcels between this one and the one to the north, um, but you know, it's still fairly close in the grand scheme of things. And then here's the, you can see the woods and the grass, the fields rather. Um, Ooh, whoever lives in that house is lucky. Yes. 
So they, so to understand this, uh, now that you talked about it, Mary, they only have to farm what's the green. They don't have to, they only have to farm part of it. So they'll do a baseline. And the, I, so I assume this is, it said it had to be 50% agricultural. So this probably is pretty close if, you know, if not that. And they'll do a baseline and they'll, they'll sort of walk this and measure it. So over the years, say five years from now, they'll want to make sure that the trees haven't crept in, that this is still agricultural, but they're not going to make them like clear cut the trees or anything like that. It doesn't have to be completely farming. It has to be, you know, prime soil and, and at least maintain it as it is, is my understanding. And who owns the property right to the south of where your marker is? Because I see the green down below there too. Who farms that? Is that Art West as well? I can't answer that. I'm just I would think there's a good guess because it looks like that's the only way to access that land. Yeah. Well, that's what I was going to ask. How do you get to it? Right, right. It must be over here. But I can't answer um, unless I looked on the town map right now. I can pull that up. Um, if you just give me one second, it's loading. Sure. <laughs> and do you know, does he, does he farm it himself or does he rent all that out? Just curious. I'm not sure. I, doesn't Brian, you know, um, they've got all those cows, so they need to have the food for the cows. So I would think a lot of that would be corn and hay and silage well, for the cows. But I, I, I think they, know. Yeah, I think they do a lot of it, but you said it's two, they're up to now 250 acres. So I'm guessing, I wonder, just curious on that. What would happen if they let it go and they don't do it? They don't farm it. Well, what, um, oh, you mean when it's the APR? Yeah. Um, there are, so there are, that it is forever. And you are, you are signing an agreement saying you will keep it in, um, I, we put our land under APR, so I, I had to sign this agreement. And I mean, I there you you need to at least pay somebody to go in and hay it once a year, to, so it doesn't turn into forest and stuff. But it's prime farmland, so you know. I mean, I felt with our land that even if we rented out to the Barstows, even if they didn't want it at some point in the future probably there'd be a farmer very glad to get it because it's such good prime soil. And, um, but you, they are required to keep it in some form of agriculture. So at least, um, you know, at least mow it <laughs> once a year or something. I just wasn't sure if, uh, if they go out and check it, if there's penalties and if there were penalties, did it come, is it only penalties on the property owner? Would there be any penalties on the town at all? That's all. I think it's all on the landowner and mm -hmm. I think it would be more trying to inspire and, you know, get them, th get them to do what they're supposed to do rather than take a lot of money. But there, yeah, you do have, um, and they do come through and do the baseline and then do come through every few years and okay. walk the property. As for the property owners to the South, there's um, the, there's a few parcels um, that are kind of divvied up there uh, on the far bottom right is owned actually by Hampshire College. Um, kind of in the middle, there's a, a parcel that's owned by, um, I think the last name is Cavasa, um, Frank and Sophie Cavasa. Um, and then to the bottom left is uh, Stephen Grader. I don't know if that uh, rings any helpful bells for anybody. They may have a right of way. Mm. I don't know. I mean, that's something that the state in their due diligence, I'm sure, would be looking at. You get access from the road. Many times when we do APR, usually there's someone here at the meeting that goes over all the different pieces. A lot of times, did anybody, there was a representative for Art West group there? No. I think usually it's the Conservation Commission that kind of explains it, but which they are. Um, hmm. 
I think they have to go through a lot of hoops to get the state to the federal government to say this is an appropriate use of the APR. Um, I mean, the, the risk is, well, the, an alternative is that this, this part here gets sold as building lots um, and this grows into forest. I mean, I, you know, that could, or, I mean, I, I think it's great they're wanting to keep it under not developed. Um, so normally, uh, well, when the property owner submits their application to the state for review to see if their property would be, you know, considered um, to be adopted into the program, we didn't get a copy of that application. So the information uh, that the town received was uh, semi-limited semi because I don't understand why I asked with uh, Jennifer as well. Uh, neither of us got a copy of that. The state just doesn't supply that um, for whatever reason, but we have the letter from the state saying that they were going to move forward with the offer and it, that gave, which is attached in here. So that's that's the only information that we were given, but looking at the connectivity of the landscape as well, because a lot of that parcel is forested and it's pretty close to the, uh, the mountain range the south, which doesn't, I don't think it quite appears on these maps. Um, that's a lot of really important forested ecosystem as well that is not necessarily part of the APR because it's not being farmed, uh, which is good because that's also preserving forested land. <laughs> Little bonus. <laughs> and I don't know if anybody had specific questions and I can do my best to field them. <laughs> I've got one. Uh, is there any possibilities of recreation um, in the forested areas? You know, Andy, this is this is still private property. It's still um, the APR is the difference between the market rent and then the agricultural rent uh, price, rather not rent. But it's not. It doesn't make it at all public land. It's still a private private landowner. Um, it's not like a conservation restriction. It might be for trails or for, you know, in exchange for the conservation, you know, restriction money you get, you allow public access or, or limited access. This is still very much private land. I think that's an important distinction to make because some people think that um, an APR means they can walk on, you know, they can right. walk through it. Right. So there's still further protections that this parcel could get in the future. No. If the, if the landowner is willing to, to accept them. Right? It, it's, you know, when you put an APR on, you may not be able to put a path on it or a road on it, or, I mean, this is really for agricultural. It's, it's, it's quite restrictive. Um, so I apologize if there was confusion when I was referring to the kind of connectivity with the um, the state park uh, and you know the the mountain range. I was I was just speaking more in terms from a habitat perspective that that would be uninterrupted and undeveloped forested land for the benefit of the natural um, ecosystem and the animals that are using that right now. But um, thank you, Mary, for clarifying that it is still private property and. I think you mentioned too that, you know, this is a in perpetuity kind of thing. So whoever the successor is of this land, I don't know if this property owner has any children who might inherit the land. And if they do, then they need to honor the APR as well. Um, or if the property were sold to somebody that's not familial, then it would still be required. Um, and it would still be their private land and they would still be restricted based on all of the agreement that they're making mm -hmm. now. You were you you weren't unclear. Has an APR ever been defeated at town meeting? Um, not that I'm aware of, Andy. I don't think it's ever been, but that doesn't mean it hasn't. It means I haven't thought about it. Okay. We've had over thirteen hundred acres um, preserved using CPA money. And a lot of those were five acres, 10 acres, somewhere 100 acres. Um, so there's, it's been a pretty common, it's been a pretty common.
common and acceptable um, use of the CPA funds. And like I said, by the time the state and federal government say it's a good, it's a good candidate, I think that they've they've put it through a lot of um, scrutiny. Mm -hmm. So there's one on this application. Um, there's a couple things to point out. The the letter said six hundred and thirty thousand, um, and I have. I'm going to stop sharing for a minute. Um, well, the yeah. Let me. Sorry, I have one thing I want to bring up, and I just want to make sure I find it right. Um, So in the past, the TDRs paid, recent past, at the beginning, CPA paid 100% of the town portion. And then once the TDR started, it was paying, TDR was 20%, CPA 80%. And then a couple of years ago, it switched to 50-50. Um, and the TDR has, as I understand, about 100,000 or a little over that in it right now. Um, so let me share. Mm -hmm. Who was it who decided to make those changes? Is it the the Conservation Commission? Because okay. the TDR came into before there wasn't a TDR fund. So once there was a TDR fund, this is one of the uses to use the money on. Um, okay. So that that was the Conservation Commission. Um, so right now, the way that it's proposed is the total appraisal is 630,000 and that's been agreed upon by the landowner and, and the state. Um, the state portion is um, 90%, so it'd be 567,000. The Conservation Commission voted to support 33,000 from that, which leaves 30,000 from the CPA. That seems pretty straightforward, um, except that there is one wrinkle um, apparently the new, the appraisal is only good for one year and they had, the state has to do a new appraisal and then present that to the landowner. And if the appraisal has gone up, um, which land prices and building price, it just seems like there has been movement in, in, you know, one year to the next, the last couple of years on what appraisals are. The appraisal may be the same figure, um, but if it goes up, the state is not going to pay, this is the state and federal really, is not going to pay more than 567000 So if the um, value of the appraisal goes up, either the town has to pick up the difference or the landowner has to settle and not, um, not get the full amount. Again, they could take a tax deduction. So if it went up 10%, for example, that would put it, put it pretty close to 700,000. So if we only provide 630,000, that extra 70,000, the West could say, all right, fine, we'll accept the 630,000 we agreed to before, or no, we'd rather have the 700, we can back out, or um, problem is timing. We don't, you know, we don't, if we vote now and then it goes up, at this amount and they want more, we have to wait until the fall. And, and it was really, this took longer than it should have just for a couple of reasons to get to this point. So um, one thought is, would the CPA feel comfortable saying, okay, if there's a 10 or 11%, I rounded figures off, 11% increase in the value, the state portion would be 567, the TDR is 33, that would leave 100,000 from the, um, the CPA. And we could vote on the 30, we could vote on the 100, we could vote on something in between. If we voted on the 100, it doesn't mean they're paid that amount. It just means that if the appraisal does go up and they should receive the appraisal like a week or two before town meeting. So that was the other problem. They have ordered one, but they said it would be a two month process, which would put it pretty close to town meeting. So it wasn't time for it wasn't time for us to meet or them to put it on the warrant in time. That was the real thing. Um, so that's, 
I mean, we can say we got the 630. Let's just vote on that. Um, I certainly want to be fair to the West or to any whoever it was that was doing the APR. And if the value has gone up 10 percent, you know, but it is a lot more money from the town. Um, I mean, if they started completely over, but they may not be willing to do that or the state may not be willing to do that. Um, because again, it's a three-year process that they're most of the way through. So um, that's that's kind of one of the discussion points for us. So see what people have to say. Mary, can you describe the, the mechanism by which the CPA would be reimbursed if we approve the 100,000 and it turns out to be less? So again, um, when somebody is awarded CPA funds, they're not given the money. They're, they apply their invoices to it and then they're paid from the fund. And it would be similar to here. They wouldn't be given the 100,000 if, if the final thing comes in at 650,000, then the CPA would be paying 50,000 and the TDR 33. So it won't be, it's not like it gives the money out and then asks for it back. It only gives out what's needed to be given out. Does that answer? Yes. Well, I'd be personally very comfortable setting the amount at the 100,000. This is an important project. It's already had several hiccups and I think we should just do what we need to do to get it in the bag as soon as we can. That would I agree. be my opinion. I agree too. I have a question. Why hasn't this, I've never heard this before. We've done a lot of APR lands and we've even had some that have taken more than the two years, but no one's ever come back with an appraisal or ever asked this before. I can't answer that, Amy, because I, I don't have that depth of, um, but I will say, I'm not sure values in Hadley have jumped so much in a year or two as they might have in the last year or two. Um, well, then they're the only prices that have it. Yeah. So hmm. my thinking is, is yes, I definitely see that I don't want people to be out money, but it just seems different. We're only applying it to just to this one and we've never done it before. And now how about the other ones that are hanging? Are they going to reapply? Are we going to end up with more? It just seems to me like maybe we're starting a precedent here. How so? Well, if we just in, in, do more than what, because we think, you know, oh, we're guessing and we're, we're approving more than what is the original amount that's mm -hmm. requested, then how about all the other ones that we did? And how about ones going forward? I don't know. I just, I, I just, I've never seen this before on all the other APRs and we've done a lot. We yes, we've done a lot, but poor, uh, from, from what I can understand, uh, this Arthur West APR fell through the cracks last September. Okay. And it should have been on the docket last September. If it was, we wouldn't be here tonight. Okay. It did it. So that's why Mary wisely suggested that we have a meeting tonight. And that's why every APR has an appraisal done by the state. And that's where they come up with the figure. Now, this has just been brought out in the open that the current appraisal is 630,000. And the state and the federal government is only gonna pay 567,000 of that. So the, if, if the appraisal comes in higher, the state is only going to give their 567,000. Yeah. And the town of Hadley, if I understand it correctly, is asked to contribute the remainder. Now, where the town of Hadley gets it from the CONCOM, from the CPA, it doesn't matter really, as long as they get the money available. And I think what Mary is trying to do is to make sure that there is up to a certain amount of money available to use for the Arthur West APR. Is that correct, Mary? It is. It is. I, you know, I think what Amy is saying is valid, though. Of, you know, maybe there's 
maybe every landowner has just accepted whatever they were offered. And if the appraisal came in higher, they just knew that was a difference. Um, mm -hmm. If we only vote the 30,000, then if it does come in higher than 630,000, then the West can accept the 630 and take a tax deduction for the difference as a donation to the town, or they can refuse it altogether. Um, and, I, you know, the... Um, I, I'm a little confused too because the letter that Shyla had included is dated um, like September 28th, which would not have been enough time to put it before town meeting last October 16th. It would have had to wait till this one anyways, um, but I don't know, I just don't know if that was a repeat letter or how long the appraisal period is, but we were explained that in this case, you know, there's definitely another appraisal needed and they, you know, they have to do the appraisal and then they have to um, show it to the landowner and they can decide what they want to do, but the state will not pay more than what's already approved. Um, what are we doing with Hanrich? How about do they need, I mean, they're the ones that we approved, what, two years ago? In 2021. So. Oh, okay. What's the one that's pending that's, that's old? There's Handrich and Grilinski, and those are both um, those are both um, here. The Handrich property was approved at 2021, and the Grilinski. And I assume I don't know why it's still those there. are set in the stone. Yeah, they're all agreed to. They're all finalized. They're all done. They're not. So they're not over, their appraisal's not older than a year? It I wasn't it, it wasn't at the time that we approved it. So if I'm understanding correctly, and Amy, I understand what your concern is about uh, what might happen if other APRs fell into a reappraisal. Uh, I think that once, once there's a vote uh, from both the CONCOM and the CPA or uh, whichever one takes on the amount, that is what's set in stone. And that's the offer that we give to the property owner and they can do with it what they wish based on whatever the state says. Um, mm -hmm. Typically, this is not the scenario we would be in and due to the falling of through the cracks last fall, you know, that's why uh, we're in this position. It's not something that I don't, I, Excuse me. I don't think it's something that would be setting a precedent because it's not what normally would happen. Um, it's an outlier in, in this particular instance. And all of the other ones are already set in stone, as Edwin said, that you already made those votes for the amount that you want to specify. So whatever vote you decide on tonight, you know, there's there's no going back um, as far as I know. Right. <laughs> I think it's probably actually the town much. meeting vote. It's probably the town well, meeting vote, Shyla, right. that, that yeah, we, just, you. we just are, you know, making suggestions and okay. the townspeople that, that I've never been to a town meeting before. So. You're okay, in for a come. treat. Yeah. <laughs> I look forward to it. Mark? Um, a few questions. Um, the You've mentioned 10 or 11%. Those are hypotheticals? Yes. Or Hopefully are those they're the outside. Somehow? Hopefully they're an upper level, upper limit. Upper I limit. I'm not a real estate person. It just seems like I I it may go up nothing. You know, it, it just is more feeling like okay. trying to cover our bases, basically. Okay. And then uh, my second of say three questions was. If you say, I heard of several people say they were okay with a hundred thousand. Is that, would that be a up to, but not necessarily a hundred? I mean, is it, we're voting to say we will fund up to a hundred thousand, but not more than whatever the uh, estimate, you know, the assessment values it, or, or is that, or I thought I heard someone say something like, how do we get the difference back? I mean, right. are we actually giving? So, My expectation is that we're, if we voted yes on let's, let's say a hundred thousand, that would say we're willing to contribute up to that level, but we're not. I wrote up a draft um, so. just because I think that's helpful. I put to see if the town will vote to appropriate and transfer. I added up to. 100,000 from the CPA 
open okay. space set aside for the purpose of acquiring an APR on all or a portion of the parcel property known as the West Farm. Added the map and parcel number, 57 acres. And the select board enter into such agreements on behalf of the town as may be necessary for the town to be a co-holder of say, said APR with such conditions to include that the applicant would have two years from the date of approval, um, so forth. So, um, okay. And, so, and who would set that number, whether it's 100,000, it's so that would be the, or it's that would, no increase? That would be the MDAR with what okay. their final um, appraisal came in at. And what I'm actually hoping, let me stop sharing so you can see each other better. What I'm actually hoping will happen is that the appraisal will come in before town meeting and say it comes in at 500 and 650,000. We, I can give Aunt Randy a friendly amendment and change this 100,000 to 50,000 so that it would be in line with what it actually was. Um, but I don't, I didn't want to have like this emergency me <laughs> meeting right okay. before town meeting to, so I, that's what I'm hoping, but who knows if the appraisal will actually come in in time. Okay. So I guess my last question was, and it's kind of a devil's advocate because I heard someone say, you know, is, is this going to make other people that got locked in at one rate on their APRs, uh, give them heartburn? Um, mm -hmm. Is there a risk that during COVID there is this inflationary spike in real estate, in land property? And could someone say, oh, you know, you've facilitated them, the West family, you know, benefiting from this 10 or 11 percent spike, which then adjusted down afterwards? And geez, I wish we had applied during a crisis. Or I, 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 I don't know. Or, or should should you say, a normal average inflationary year would be four percent, and so we would approve up to four yeah. percent. I mean, I, I don't know. Um, and that's fine. We could certainly do that. Um, I'm not. I wish I knew more about what the real estate is doing from one year to the next, other than just seems like it's, you know, one thing that's nice about the APR program, it seems like it's a way to be fair to the farmers that are giving up these development rights. And I kind of hate to have them have to take a big donation if they really shouldn't, but it is a lot more money for the town to come up with. Edwin, what do you, I'm sorry. Right, um, it's, it, it's all, it all comes down to the luck of the draw, Mark. That's yeah. what it comes down to. We applied for an APR in the middle of what the town had a building moratorium where they didn't allow any building permits. It's the way things are. It's the way things, at, uh, it's the way things are. It's what they are. Uh, the Department of Food, of Food and Ag only deals with two or three appraising companies in the, across the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And those companies figure out the best use for the land. And then they say, okay, your land is worth this much. Now you have to put in a road. So you're sub, you subtract so many feet of, of a road and water and sewer and everything. And you come and the appraisers, appraising company comes up with a figure. We will give you this amount of money, period. And that's how they that's how they come with it. And I really don't think that this is gonna set a precedence because down the road, if people are upset and they say, well, you know, crying out loud, what are we talking about? The CPA gave West a lot of, a lot of extra money. That's not going to happen because it's the way things are. You can't change what's going on in the world right now. And the simple fact that it is, it is a, nobody can figure out that there was going to be a pandemic and a COVID situation. So that's that's what happens. And two years from now, three years from now, it's going to be something different. Who knows what it's going to be? If I my crystal ball is a little fuzzy right now, and I can't really tell what what's going to happen. So yeah. I don't really know what what. Yeah. And that's just the way it is. It's just the luck of the draw. No, I I hear you. I hear you. I've got a farm okay. out out in the Midwest and. 
2012, most of the state had to plow theirs under because of the drought. And mm -hmm. our farm was one of the ones that just got enough rain to get a crop. And so, mm -hmm. you know, that was a windfall because the, the prices went way, way, way up. So oh, no, yeah. I hear you. I hear you. Yeah. I guess, so I guess, I guess one of the 4%. Go ahead. Amy. I just, the, the only, I don't have a problem with the money. I don't have a problem with uh, the dollars. I'd rather, it's just, I don't, my biggest problem is the fact is we don't have the dollar amount and then we're guessing. And that's the problem that I don't really like. I really, if, if before town meeting, that's what the value was, well, then that's what he deserves. But just, but we have a set time and almost a set, and we have a dollar amount to float money or to float a, a guess of what we might need. That makes me nervous that I, I'm not a, a fan because then maybe we should be floating more every time it comes in saying, well, maybe we should have something just in case. Um, so it's it's because we don't have the dollar amount. Um, right. If we had the dollar amount, absolutely. Um, even if we had the dollar amount before town meeting, absolutely. But the fact is we don't have, that's what makes me nervous is floating money. Well, and one yeah. way to do this, Amy, would be to um, vote to do the 30000 unless we get a firm appraisal before town meeting and then agree to go up to another 70000 on top of that or something like that. We could, you know. I'm not sure we could do that in one vote. We'd have to meet again. Okay. Before town meeting. I think. Yeah, uh, I think too, so too. Too many if thens. You but, couldn't but, but, authorize the chair to to make a friendly amendment up to a certain amount if we had the actual. Well, well even that's tricky because there's a limit to how much you can adjust spending by amendment at town mm -hmm. meeting. So okay. you want to check with the town attorney. Okay. Make sure right. that you can you can do that. Um. Well, we could, I mean, if we, it would probably be a 10 minute meeting, we could do the 600, we could do the 30,000 now that we know for sure is requested. And if you'd be willing to, I mean, I'd have to post the meeting. So it, it just depends on timing. They said, it, you know, it should come about the second week or third week in April, but who knows if it actually will. I can see if the if Jennifer can check with the MDAR and see if there are any updates. I mean, we, we could try that to have a quick meeting beforehand and have it very quick. Um, or we just stick with the 630 or we, I, you know, I think Amy's concerns are valid. It's, it's mm -hmm. you know, we're, um, and we can't go back. We can't like borrow it from somewhere and re replenish with the CPA. It has to be forward, forward going. So um, we, 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 we do have an application, go ahead. We did adjust a number once when with CPA right before town meeting when it had to do with the um, the rental income um, because right so we just had to make the one friendly amendment at and that went after it was all printed so we did do it once where we everything was fine but the number was adjusted and I did a friendly amendment on the pavilion the picnic tables last meeting too it was only a couple hundred or thousand a couple thousand but um i, gave I think that. that's i think that's preferable to having a a um, a lightning meeting before mm -hmm. before town meeting so too. but but let, let me if i can quickly address the idea of the precedent which really is not a thing in the cpa process just because we did it this time just because we've never done it doesn't mean we can't do it this time. Just because we do it this time doesn't mean we have to do it every time after that. Each project is unique and we can adjust our process according to the circumstances. Um, so just because we do it now, it doesn't mean somebody can say to us, well, you did it for them. You know, mm -hmm. uh, We can just say, well, we did it that time. We're not doing it this time. Um, but I, I also think that um, yeah, this is a hard process for landowners and they get fed up. You know, and there's just like one more delay and they say, forget it. And then they just sell it because it, for housing lots because it's so easy. Um, and so I don't want this CPA process to appear to be a hiccup. The reason why this project falls through 
And that's why I think putting the 100000 knowing that it won't be spent if it doesn't need to be, uh, is the easiest and safest way to make sure this project goes forward. So dis dis despite, I, I hate to disagree with Amy, uh, who knows a lot more about money stuff than I do, but I think, um, you know, as a town, if we weren't on top of this, then we should be willing to pay the extra if that's what it takes. We want to be fair to the, to the landowner. I do also think a lot of the money that we vote on, people ask for more money than what they end up using and we get money back. And because this particular process has the extra step and the extra parties with the appraisals, they can't do that and ask for extra at the beginning. So it, to me, it seems really familiar to um, when we hear cemetery proposals or other proposals and we get an estimate and they know that they just aren't going to receive all the funds if if they don't use them all and and that's fine well if somebody wants to make a motion for whatever they'd like to make um, I, I just want to make sure there aren't any other comments well, we'll so have there are, and I'm, denise did you want to say something Good. Best committee member. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll make a motion that the CPA fund this project up to a hundred thousand dollars. I'll second that motion. And we any will. Other, any other discussion? Well, no. And this should we put in your uh, motion, Andy, that uh, we're going to be waiting for a friendly am amendment from Mary Thayer on the town meeting floor or not i don't know if we have to put that in the uh um well wait no if we do this then mary doesn't have to make her friendly amendment right right, right? that's the point mm -hmm. unless you want to decrease it under a yeah. friendly amendment just right. to just, and last time i didn't do it on the floor i handed it to randy ahead of time and he just read it that way and said it's you know we have a friendly amendment um, so I didn't have to stand up and say mm. why or whatever. I just right. the, the Mary's amendment would be if we voted the 30,000 and it turns out it's more than that. Then for whatever the, the difference is, the amendment would raise the amount by that much. Right. But this way, since we already have the cushion, it, mm. we put in the 100,000 and if it's 60,000, they get 40,000 back. Right. We get 40,000 back. Right. right, we do. The, and the risk of putting the 30,000 with me doing a friendly amendment to raise it is that the appraisal's late and we don't know the figure before town meeting. Whereas if we put in the 100, and it could be more than 100,000, who knows? And then, but that's the limit that it would be. Right. Um, I, I, I tried to think 10% was on the high side just to cover whatever it came out to be. Um, but I don't know. Yeah, so I don't think we have to talk about this future possible strategy in the motion. Okay. Any unless other anybody, a motion and we have a second. Yeah, unless Any anybody other? wants it in there. No. Any other comments or discussion? All right. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed? Any abstaining? I'm waiting for Amy to decide. You're abstaining, Amy? Yeah, I'm abstaining because I agree 100% with the APR. I like everything. I just don't like the, the guessing of the figure. I like, I'm one that has to have the numbers set in stone. I don't want to, the, the guessing is the part that I don't like. But I 100% agree with the, so that's why I don't want to say <laughs> no, I disagree. Thank Great. you. That's what, and, that's what abstaining is for. Yep. And Cassandra, what was your vote? I'm not sure I, I heard it. Yes. You were in favor. Okay. So we're one, two, three, six, six oh, six. and one. Six, yes. Correct. Very good. All right. Well, thank you, Shyla, for joining us. It was nice to, to have everyone meet you, and we look forward to seeing you at future CPA um, 
meetings and and thank you Edwin too we are both on the con you know for the conservation commission well, thank you to, so much for your welcome to Hadley. Yeah. I know this can yeah. be an intimidating place for a new person so I'm glad the uh, CPA at least gave you a warm welcome yeah, you've both been wonderful, and thank you so much for your flexibility and thoughtful discourse on this. I know it's not a traditional scenario, and, you know, ideally this is not a scenario we'll have to navigate through again, but I appreciate all of you uh, taking the time and for considering this, and thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. All right, next next we have Alan. Oh, who's Shelly, you don't, have to, you don't have to stay for the rest of the meeting if your business with us is finished. To. Okay. You can, but you don't have to. I, I, had, I had let her know that at the beginning, too. Oh, okay. I, I have to go take care of my dog, so I will go for the night. But thank you all again. It was lovely to meet you, and I look forward to seeing you again. All righty. Take care, everyone. Yeah. Alan, thank you for your patience. Um, you can... Alan has put a, another um, application before us for the Akanum fence, and I'll let Alan talk about that. Oops, what happened? There you are. Oh, Alan, we can't hear you. Oh, you, can you hear oh, me now? There you are. Yes, yep, he, he okay. just wasn't talking. All right, thanks, <laughs> uh, and thank, thank you all for uh, putting me on the agenda for tonight. Um, what I have, uh, put into, uh, and I think everybody has seen this, is actually a revised budget for the already approved Hockenham Fence project that the CPA and the town meeting approved back uh, more than a year ago. Um, and that's for the uh, <clears throat> replacement of the stone wall with a granite uh, and chain post uh, fence along the western edge of the cemetery. <clears throat> Due to the time uh, that has elapsed since this project first saw the light of day, which is almost two years now, <clears throat> there was a delay with the town meeting, if you recall. Um, we were on town meeting warrant for, I think it was the fall of 2020. And we didn't get heard because the meeting was adjourned for lack of a quorum. So we had to go to the next spring to, to get this approved. Uh, and the budget at that time was $68,000, uh, 65,000 from CBA and uh, 3,000 from Sanitary Committee Trust Fund. Uh, and then we had to go through a period of time of putting together the, the plans, the specs for bidding. And then the town had to uh, spend some time to, uh, putting the bid package together, the invitation for bids. And uh, by the time that happened, it was fe February of this year. And, and uh, we actually did go out to bid, but then the, uh, there was a problem, there was a procedural problem with the bidding process. So the bid had to be canceled. Um, and uh, with that, that has been straightened out, but um, and we'll go out to bid again but in, in the whole process of uh, this uh, back and forth and delaying, we realized that it's very likely that the, that the bids are gonna come in higher than the budget, given the length of time, <laughs> everything with inflation, supply <laughs> chain, et cetera. So we, we asked our consultant to take another look at the, at the numbers and see if, if we need to update those. And, um, the upshot is that we we will likely need another eighteen or nineteen thousand dollars for to, to make this this project work in, in all all of its phases. So what we're asking for is an increase of the total budget to eighty seven thousand dollars, of which we're asking CPA to contribute uh, eight. Eighteen thousand dollars, and the com and the committee will put in another thousand. That brings it to eighty-seven thousand. So, in other words, the uh, another way to look at it is CPA money is six was sixty-five. We're now asking for um, eighty-three from CPA, which is another eighteen thousand dollars. And then, if if CPA, if you folks 
uh, see fit to approve that and town meeting approves it, then we'll go out to bid immediately after town meeting and hopefully we'll be able to get uh, the project underway the re uh, this year, assuming that the bids do come in under a new budget, which is not a guarantee. <clears throat> I think you've gotten the short end of the stick with the uh, the loss of the quorum, and then you had some kind of a bidding error. I, I'm in favor of this. I'm sure this is happening all over the state and all over the country, where projects that were delayed because of the pandemic are now more expensive. It doesn't mean they're any less important to complete. Probably what could have happened if, if we did get bids back and they were over the amount, we would probably would have had to um, can, cancel, not cancel, but uh, not accept the bids and then go back to, to you folks in the fall which, and we'd lose another year. Right. So and it would be even more expensive. That. Yeah, and right. more expensive. Right. So hopefully we can avoid it. I mean, as you know, I mean, the, Conserv the Sanitary Committee projects that up to now have been pretty economical. We've been able to give money back uh, because the bids have come in low, but I think that we've run out of luck on that one. And and not only because of the timing, but this is a more complicated project. It's more of a construction project than just having someone come in and straighten out the gravestones and, and clean them up. Um, this, is a, this involves heavy equipment, police details, uh, purchasing of, of, equip, of, of materials, uh, and uh, and so I think um, we'd be well advised to have a little more money available if we need it, and it would, it would enhance our chances of getting this project done. Well, I'm with Mark. I um, I definitely support you. Your projects have been textbook CPA projects in the past, and no reason to think why this one won't be the same as all the others. I guess my only question is, Mary, how you want to do this? Do we want to hold the old amount and then put the total of the new amount? Or do we want to just give extra from what's already been approved? So it's already been, it's already been approved. Here's what I did for the um, article draft. I put to see if the town will vote to transfer 18,000 from the CPA historic set aside fund to the Hadley Cemetery Committee said funds to be in addition to the 65,000 previously approved by article two of the May 2021 annual town meeting for the purpose of replacing the stone okay. fence of the Hakunam Cemetery and that you'll get two years where it comes back. How does that work? Okay. That's that's what we did with the picnic tables we put in yep. addition to really spelling Good. out that um, it's already been approved. Perfect. Yeah. I'm just waiting for any more comments before I make a motion. I'm in certainly in favor of it. <laughs> I'm on the cemetery committee as well. And All right. Well, I'll, and I'll move. I'll move that the CPA committee approve the uh, draft warrant article for this project as written. And I will second that. Any other discussion? And this is from the historical set aside? Yes, it is. Thank you. Is there enough in there, Mary? Yes, there is. Oh, sorry, we just gave you back 37,000. Yes. <laughs> and we're putting in 50,000 from the, um, the monies received this year. So, Great. and we so have them in there. We're getting the better of the deal because they gave us thirty thousand. We're only giving them eighteen thousand. No, so we're making a profit. <laughs> Any other discussion? No. All those in favor, say aye. 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 <laughs> Any opposed? Any abstain? Very good. Thank you very yeah, much, Alan, yeah, yeah. for all your work with this. Thank you, guys. You've always been very generous to the. Uh, for the historic uh, nature of the town and particularly for the cemeteries. Well, well we, we'd hope all our projects go as smoothly as yours do. Yes, thank you for your good work, Alan. I, I do have to say out of all the committees and all the different things, I use you as an example because you do have things very organized. I do appreciate all your work, all your numbers. I mean, it, you answer every question, the, um, 
the amount of information you give us is is right on, and I um, appreciate that. Kind words. We'll try. We'll try to keep uh, keep keep it going. Well, I'm with Mark. I um I definitely support you. Your projects have been textbook CPA projects in the past, and no reason to think why this one won't be the same as all the others. I guess my only question is, Mary, how you want to do this? Do we want to pull the old amount and then put the total of the new amount, or do we want to just give extra from what's already been approved? So it's already been it's already been approved. Here's what I did for the um, article draft. I put to see if the town will vote to transfer 18,000 from the CPA historic set aside fund to the Hadley Cemetery Committee said funds to be in addition to the 65,000 previously approved by article two of the May 2021 annual town meeting for the purpose of replacing the stone fence of the Hakonam Cemetery and that you'll get two years where it comes back. How does that work? That's, okay. that's what we did with the picnic tables we put in yep. addition to really spelling okay. out that um, it's already been approved. Perfect. Yeah. I'm just waiting for any more comments before I make a motion. I'm in certainly in favor of it. <laughs> I'm on the cemetery committee as well. And All right. Well, I'll, yeah. I'll move. I'll move that the CPA committee approve the uh, draft warrant article for this project as written. And I will second that. Any other discussion? And this is from the historical set aside? Yes, it is. Thank you. Is there enough in there, Mary? Yes, there is. Oh, sorry, we just gave you back 37,000. Yes. <laughs> and we're putting in 50,000 from the, um, the monies received this year, so. Great. And we See, had them in there. We're getting the better of the deal because they gave us thirty thousand. We're only giving them eighteen thousand. No, so we're making a profit. <laughs> Any other discussion? No. Nope. All those in favor, say aye. 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 <laughs> Any opposed? Any abstain? Very good. Thank you very yeah, much, Alan, for all your work with this. Thank you, guys. You've always been very generous to the. Uh, for the historic uh, nature of the town and particularly for the cemeteries. Well, well we'd, we'd hope all our projects go as smoothly as yours do. Yes, thank you for your good work, Alan. I, I do have to say out of all the committees and all the different things, I use you as an example because you do have things very organized. I do appreciate all your work, all your numbers. I mean, it, you answer every question, the, um, the amount of information you give us is is right on, and I um, appreciate that. In words, we'll try. We'll try to keep uh, keep keep it going. Yeah, no pressure. <laughs> All right. Um, next, I just wanted to. I had sent you that grant agreement. We did pay to have the attorney look over um, a grant agreement for the church. Because they had said that, so basically with the grant agreements, they they the attorney said it's typical only to use them for non-town-owned things. Like we don't need it for the cemetery wall, we don't need it for, you know, Goodwin Library. It's more for like the Golden Court windows or or the church that are um, non not town-owned. Um, and they you know they had put in for the windows. Um, to include a grant agreement, and the the, his, the housing authority did sign um, the grant agreement that we had done up, and um, this one is a little more legalese because the lawyer went through it and added a lot of legalese language. Um, but there are two things in there, so it'll be the select board that decides what to use or not to use out of this, you know, the grant agreement. But there were two things in there that I thought it'd be helpful if we just gave some input. Um, and it, you know, again, it's not, it's not a boilerplate. It's a case by case, as Andy said. Um, so one is a historic preservation. Um, and that can be, if it's a one forever, it has to be approved by the state. I think it's pretty involved. Another one is there's a term limit for like 20 years or something that doesn't have to be approved by the state. Um, and then the second one is, you know, if, 
the building is ever demolished or sold, the town is reimbursed the funds. Um, and that can be, you know, it's taxpayer money going towards a private or non-town owned building. Um, and so it's adding to the value of the building. So that could come back. In this case, with the being the first church, and you know, I'll disclose I am a member of that church. Um, but with this being the church, I'm not sure either those apply just because of the building and its importance to the town and its function in the town and how much it's used by the townspeople. Um, but we certainly could still, again, it'll be the select board to decide whether these either of those are included. Um, oh, bye, bye, Cassandra, thank you. Um, no, we don't need you to come back on. <laughs> um, but just people's thoughts on it. It's, I mean, the grant agreement, I think is a good idea. The, the main thing of the grant agreement is trying to make sure that the private, the non-town owned um, recipient follows the correct rules um, of the CPA. So it's good to spell it out. It's good to say who they report to. It's good to, and you know, they, there's some documentation they need to do. This one has every six months, I think, to report to the um, select board. And the reason we did the select board and not the CPA committee is two reasons. One, it's the select board that signs the contracts and stuff in town. And second of all, we don't meet very often. So it, it isn't real practical that they have to have bills approved through us or um, report back to us. But um, I don't think the town has done much with grant agreements. I don't think it's done much. It's It has awarded some money to the First Congregational Church and the North Hadley Congregational Church. Um, and that may be the only non-town owned buildings, but they weren't as big, they weren't as big sums either. This is $100,000, which is, you know, a bigger amount. Um, well, previous chairs of this committee were not on top of things like you are, Mary. <laughs> Well, and just didn't uh, get the grant agreements written. But most towns have them who have the CPA. Uh, it's the towns or uh, townships full-time planner who was paid and responsible for putting them together. Um, we're lucky we have you to do the work of all these lawyers uh, yeah. for free. Um, and you really did a great job. And I hope that we keep using them in the future for projects that are not, uh, you know, town owned. I think it's, I think it's a good idea. And it is kind of strongly suggested by the, the state CPA, the preservation coalition. Um, and the attorney is the one that put the language in there for the last warrant for the windows. So it was like, what do we do with this? And um, yeah, but you wrote the first draft. So credit where credit is due. <laughs> I, I, I copied. <laughs> And pasted. <laughs> Good. But thank you. Thank you. Um, but what are your thoughts on the preservation restriction and then the idea of having to repay if the building is sold? I mean, is that in this case, is that something we feel is needed or not? Or Yes, I think that's needed simply because it protects our assets. Simple as that. And if we're not going to fix somebody's place up just so they can they can sell it and not get any return on it so if they're going to sell it they're going to do something with it i think it's protecting our protecting our assets that's all i'm not too worried about the the church trying to screw us you know mm -hmm. oh now we got the cpa money we're going to sell finally we can unload the old church yeah <laughs> i don't think that's uh i don't think that's the situation here the cracks are getting denise I did. I had a question. Can somebody who is a private owner apply for CPA funding for their private? Sure. Okay. So yeah. it has to it has to fall again open space or historic yeah. or um, recreation or um, housing. So low income housing. So it 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 you know it can't be. It has to be a historic building and it has to be of some significance to the town and. Um, I, some towns have done it. Some towns have, like Springfield gave $25,000 grants to people in a certain neighborhood to fix up their historic homes. And 
the outsides of the historic homes. I mean, some towns have done, and they even did, they did it on a sliding scale. And even people that had a lot of income got less money, but they still got money out of that. And um, mm -hmm. so it, it's really a town's priorities can, it can be done, but um, I don't think it ever has been done in Hadley. I don't know how well it would go over. Um, well, the Porter Phelps Huntington House did apply for a grant in the early days of CPA okay. and the snowmobile club came in mass and voted it down. That, mm. that would have been the first time. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. The reason, Andy. Uh, they wouldn't let them snowmobile through their property. Mm. Yeah. I'm looking you know, at but they're, the they're, 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 they're private and we would have given the money to them. It was close, but it, but it went down. I, you know, the APRs are certainly private people. Yeah. That, that's the case where it's been given to private landowners, but that's for a very specific reason. Mm -hmm. um, well, snow, snow, the snowmobilers didn't worry about not having access to all, all this farmland. Maybe they do. Uh, yeah, I, 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 agreement. I, you know, I was very surprised. Um, but, but, you know, it could happen. You know, let's say that there's a, a historic relic of Hadley's that's in private hands and we want to use CPA money to help preserve it. Right. You know, we would want an agreement for that. It could yeah. be a building. It's, it it's pretty be. common in other towns, especially yeah. historical societies and, and museums. They get CPA support. Right, right. The strong house in Amherst. Of course, we can't say Amherst did it because then we can't do it. Mm -hmm. um, well, we don't have to, we don't, this isn't a vote. This is more just, I wanted people's thoughts on it. And, and no. it's really, it's a select board. We covered everything. Yeah. Um, so potential projects, I just wanted to, um, talking with Carolyn Brennan, she asked if I'd run this by you, just an initial kind of um, opinion and, um, Paul Kozub, Paul from Vodka, V1 Vodka, um, has been in the St. John's Church for all these, for a decade or so, or eight years, seven years. And um, I think it had sat empty for 10 or 20 years before that, um, since the churches had merged. And anyways, he's, he had bought that building and he is now moving his, um, his, offices and, and building to a new location in Hadley and asked Carolyn as town administrator, would the town be interested in buying that building? It's historic um, in the center of town there. It's right, you know, next to the library, the old library next to the new library. And um, so she, um, she's, been trying to see who would be interested in terms of what it would be used for. She thought maybe even park and rec. It's a, I did, she asked, I did go over and look and met Paul there and it's a big open um, room now, all the pews are out. There's certainly a lot of um, Catholic symbols in there that, you know, could be, um, you know, changed, I guess, but um, it's got one small bathroom and she was going to have people from the building department or DPW building department take a look at what would be needed um, to do anything with it. And, you know, it's, you know, mm -hmm. park and rec couldn't, it couldn't, it'd have to fall under the historic bucket, not the park and rec bucket because it's inside. It's not, it's not an outside outdoor thing, but um, I asked Diana West from who's chair of the historic commission and she said she definitely would like to see it saved from a historic point of view. Um, but so anyways, she wasn't, you know, she's not trying to put an application right now, but she wondered mm -hmm. if, if um, what our thoughts were on CPA. Um, I think Paul bought it for maybe 70,000, I think he said, and, and he's put some money into it. It's assessed, I looked it up, it's like assessed for like 210,000 or something. Um, it's got eight parking spaces. It is handicapped accessible, at least into the building. Um, and it's got like a little stage and I, I, I'm just throwing it out there. We don't even have to comment on it, but I, I thought I'd see if you guys had some had some thoughts of I definitely want to comment on it. 
Good. Uh, they can come to CPA to uh, hire an architect to come up with a future plan for municipal use of the building. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That I would be the good first step. I'm not sure Paul's window is that far out. You know, if we voted on that in September and then voted on, you know, a purchase mm -hmm. price or uh, whatever the following May, I, I'm not sure he's. That's oh, his I, I see. But, um, I see. Well, I think um, you know, acquiring assets is a permitted use for this of CPA funds, and I would be for... interested to see what the coalition thought. But uh, if we could buy it for the town, I think we should do it. Yeah, if it's like, uh, if it's got to be done quickly, then. It was built you know. in 1902. Yeah. So it's <laughs> over 100 years. Yeah, and we, we put a restriction on it so it would look the same from the outside and, uh, you know, make it uh, put in handicapped accessible bathrooms because it's a public space and, yeah. you know, the similar process of what we're doing for the old library building. Right. Amy? I would be in, in uh, favor of saving that building. I would love to see it saved, but I definitely do not think it's something that would be good for the town because we have so many buildings and we can't get them going on right now. We have the, the Goodwin, which <clears throat> we have now that's getting expired. That still is in limbo about that. Never mind Russell School was a whole nother project that we just cannot get going on. Um, so to take on a whole nother building, I don't think that we've done a good job on the two buildings that we don't, that are empty now. Um, one thing I did think of when he said that building might, is definitely through private, and this is where CPA could help private, which I agree with CPA helping private sometimes because it is historic and would give someone um, encouragement to go in there. But the Pioneer uh, Valley Symphony Orchestra I know that they rent space from the uh, Most Holy Redeemer um, in their in their church um, in their rec rec place to uh, just to practice all the time, and then they're always looking for places to do that. So they're renting places out all different, you know. So it's somewhere like that, it would be great for 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 something. I, it was just an idea that's out there. But what I'm saying is, I definitely like the building. I just don't think that we would want to put it in the town budget as another building to keep up when we can't take care of what we got. Mm -hmm. well, those I, are excellent I, points. I agree with you, Amy. Yeah, yeah. but I, we could use CPA money to help the new private owner put a right. historical restriction on the building. <laughs> right. You know, and Paul asked me, he said, well, could I keep the building and apply to CPA? And I said, yes. I said, but we haven't done for private buildings like this before but it is a historic building and you know yes you could apply I don't know if people would <laughs> agree with that but um yeah I mean that was so uh, different than the north than the, than the two churches I'm sorry Alan could you say that again it doesn't seem any different than the second church in North Hadley and the first church in in the center of town it's another church it's a historic church it's a historic building so if right the, you can justify but those are owned by the diocese of springfield they weren't owned by the individuals of the town of hadley what difference does it make as a historic building i think it would matter more what he was asking for money to do right i mean, i assume he'd be asking money to keep the building standing right it can't be normal repairs <clears throat> be, yeah to preserve it and, and keep it from mm -hmm. being destroyed it Right. The one little difference, Alan, is that churches are still considered public buildings because anybody can go in and use them, where buildings in private hands are a little bit different. That's why we can spend money on like the outside and the inside could be problematic. Right. right. That I was thinking spending money on the outside, not the yeah. inside. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. I didn't understand what you meant. I like that idea of a performance space. Boy, Hadley doesn't have something like that, but it's... Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Well, how yeah, long... keep keep in mind uh, this is not this is not a CBA issue. I don't think it's a town issue. <clears throat> there, there, the parking there is limited, and uh, you know there there are two town 
buildings that are sharing that parking already, and they actually share it with the Legion. By, you know, so I don't think that the, the parking has been insufficient up to now, despite the planning board's concerns earlier on. Uh, I think it's been adequate. Uh, it's, it's worked well. But if there were another town building or even a private building using it for big performances or big events, that might become a problem in terms of having to at least uh, um, scheduling uh, of these events so they don't conflict with a big senior center event, for instance. Not, not that it couldn't be done, but it would it'd be something they would have to think about dealing with. But um, just to throw that out. Paul says he's had some tastings and coordinated it so it's when the library's closed and the library's been generous with saying, yes, you can park off hours if, you know, you have a specific <laughs> event. And But you're right, if everything's going on at once, that, that might be tighter. Um, but, yeah, anything else on comments on that? No? Um, other things coming up just will probably... Well, I'm I have an idea for a project. Can I take yes, a couple minutes? Um, I just ever so briefly emailed Denise with this idea uh, of um, Hadley hiring a historian to do a historic census of assets, of historic assets. Um, uh, buildings, parcels of land, interesting places, objects and personal collections, uh, that um, are important to Hadley history that would benefit from some sort of preservation effort, be it a restriction or a covenant or a promise of future donation or something like that. Uh, and to hire a graduate student, uh, maybe from UMass or from one of the colleges, to canvas the town and construct the census um, and to use as a roadmap for... Uh, preservation in the future. So uh, I would, uh, um, I guess I'll write something up and send it to Denise and maybe you can present it to the Historical Commission and uh, see what they think about it. Yeah, that's a great idea. You should come to our meeting. All right, let me know when, when it is. They're on Zoom? Yep. Okay, I'll definitely come then. Count me and then, on that. Uh, meeting because um, one of the other hats I wear is the Historical Society. And we've been thinking about what we need to do to uh, get a better handle on the collection that we have um, as far as inventorying it and determining what we need to do to preserve certain things beyond what we're doing now, which is a lot, but we're in the, <clears throat> we're kind of in the last century as far as uh, that goes. So there is a lot more that could be done and we've been thinking about, and there are some grant programs that we've been looking at as well, that sort of are similar to what you're talking about, but um, maybe a combined effort or um, putting our heads together might come up with a good plan forward. I think the Hatfield Historical Society used CPA money yeah. to hire a consultant for eight yep. months yep. to yep. sort of yep. knock their uh, collection yep. into shape. Yeah, and that would be they, fantastic. Yeah, they, they also, but they started off with a grant from uh, the state archive uh, program, which has a program where they, um, they, 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 if the town applies, or not the town, if the, if the society applies, you can get a roving archivist to come in and kind of give you some pointers on how to proceed. And they did, Hatfield did that. Uh, that didn't cost the town or the historical society or CBA anything, but that that was kind of the basis for the society then going to the town saying, okay, here's what we're told we need to do to keep the collection, you know, um, organized, available to, to to the public and and preserved, and then they used CPA money to to do part of that. Uh, that it looks like. Um... Good. Thank you, right. Andy. And well, let's Alan. get together, Alan, and, and knock this around. And, I'd love and, to do that. And, and make it happen. I I have a dream that one day the Groff Bible will be preserved with CPA money. 
I know we, we might have to wait for, for the next generation of historians to come to Hadley before that happens. No, no that's in the works. I, is it really? Yep. Okay, great. Great. You made my day. Um, Hopkins Fields, they're going to do another, it sounds like in the fall, they're going to try to ask for bleacher money and stuff like that for recreation. Um, right. There's more on the Goodwin and Russell coming up. Um, I'm sure there's CPA, other things out there. CPA's law is very specific about bleachers, that movable bleachers are okay, but permanent bleachers are not okay. Hmm. You know, no, no bleachers, no dugouts, no snack bars, you know, none of that, none of that. So I hope we don't disappoint them. I should, um, I'll check in with the superintendent um, and ask her if she has, if they've if got they, farther along. If they just want to check in with us, we could save them a lot of time by helping them with their proposal beforehand. Right, right. You know, that's totally fine in terms of CPA process. Okay. I know so, some applicants don't want to do it. They don't want, it's like they don't want you to know in advance for some reason, I don't know. No, I think that'll, that's a good point. I'll, Cause I'd hate to, you're right, have them spend a lot of time looking all this stuff up if we can't do it to begin with. Right. Anything else um, for projects or just one sure. last quick thing while it's fresh on our mind. So we met, you know, we had the due date January 1st, and then we met, um, you know, twice in January, the 10th and the 24th. And we did that because the town had said they wanted warrants by February 3rd or something. So that was how we could do it. And then talking with Jennifer and Carolyn, who are the ones that had said, would you please have this meeting? I'm like, well, aren't we really too late? And they said, you know, because CPA warrants don't affect finance, they don't affect other committees in terms of figuring out where the money's come. She said, you really don't have to be so early. Um, and I think for townspeople, it's nice not to have to, you know, over the holidays be fine tuning their applications to get them to us by January 1st. I certainly don't want to meet earlier, but, and I certainly don't want to meet school vacation week of February next year. It's February 20th, but I wondered about maybe having the due date February 15th and then meetings, and we don't have to decide on the meetings, but February 27th or, and March 13th, or maybe even February 1st and meeting before and after that school vacation week. Um, <clears throat> it, just seemed like, it seemed like we were so early, people kept saying, oh, I wish I had gotten this in before, you know, the superintendent did, and then this came up and I just feel like it might be nice to not, in the fall, we're doing September 1st for like an October 16th meeting and that's okay. You know, that's our deadline. And then we meet in September and we, we're just giving them the stuff about three weeks early. In the spring, we're months early. I mean, you know, for now. So um, I've gotten big, bold letters on the website due January 1st. I'd love to make it later if you guys felt that was okay. Amy, you're frowning. You understand the town stuff the most. <laughs> Well, isn't this the first year that we've pushed town meeting back that far, an extra month? So, yeah. May, May, oh. Mm. Fifth, fourth? Oh, no, I'm thinking, no, the elections got moved. Yeah, the town, elections got moved. Meeting didn't get yeah. moved. Okay. Yeah. I'm not frowning. It, it depends on how, how late it is as far as um, the problem is, is we um, – I think it's way too early being January 1st. Honestly, I think it is. I mean, as far as all the meetings that I'm meeting, I just met with capital today for the first time. I'm just finance committee just met last week for the first time. This So, so CPA is way ahead of everybody else. The only thing I would hate to see is it get too much too late because then I can't go to your meeting because I'll be in C I'll be in uh, one of the others, <laughs> but um, right. <laughs> it seems so, like right now everybody's meeting. It's every single night there's a meeting between now and, and um, the second week of April. So maybe right. if we did February 1st and then met like, you know, the 13th and 27th, which is not vacation week. I mean, maybe that's a compromise so that we're still on the early side, but we're not a whole month early. 
um, would that do you think that would be a better? I think it's just we should have something for the town report and just said meetings as needed is is kind of hokey and mm -hmm. people can plan for the the committee members can plan for to be in uh, to be home for a zoom meeting or for an in person meeting or whatever and that a specific date whatever we decide is what we should stick with but I don't have a problem with uh, February 1st and then, you know, the, the end of January, I'll request her in. Beginning of, uh, you know, the second Monday in February and the last Monday in February is when we review them and that's it, period, in the subject, you know. If there's a committee in town that doesn't know that CPAs got a ton of money in there. We're asking, we're looking around to find it out and seeing who wa who wants it. They're living with their heads in the sand and they don't want to. And they just don't want the money and they want us to jump through their hoops. And I don't think we should do that personally. But that's how I feel. I, I, I don't have a problem moving it back a month. Okay. They're changing the time zones, you know, or they're changing the daylight savings time. So we might as well change the CPA times too. What the heck, you know? Well, I want to be realistic and also be as friendly as we can be and still be fine time-wise with what we need to do. And and I think, um, yeah. I, think I like the February 1st and the 13th and the 27th. I think that's a good. Okay. Yeah. Like the, the one thing I would ask is to have a little time between the submission deadline and the first meeting, so okay. you can so two you weeks. can distribute the proposals. There's okay. two weeks. The planning. Yeah. This this way we're still the first ones in, right? Right. First ones completed, and so you all can focus on your other committees. <clears throat> yeah. We wouldn't be meeting in March, so yeah. <laughs> Unless something comes up. All right. Well, the, I will change that. Thank you all very much for meeting. I'm sorry it wasn't as short a meeting as, <laughs> as I oh. thought it might be, but it's good to go over all this stuff. I really appreciate it. Mary, one yeah. other quick question. Do you, you said um, we paid the attorney to go to polish up the um, uh, grant agreement proposals, um, and that was paid out of the administrative fund? So I our see. administrative fund was 3000 is what we requested last January, well, last ATM in June or May, I guess, whenever mm -hmm. it was last year in May. And then um, 1750 got paid to the coalition, state coalition for our dues, which is a typical yearly bill and I think well worth it. And then, so that left us 1250. Um, and I have not seen the bill yet. I did, I just got the figures I got were just updated through 315. So the attorney has not, um, they just gave me the answer last week. I'm not sure I would have gotten it yet if we hadn't been meeting, but they nicely <laughs> responded since we had our meeting. Um, and so that will come out. Um, if, if the select board wants like a, you know, um, a deed restriction or if there's expenses with the grant for the church steeple, that might be more coming out of um, our fund. We did ask for 5,000, not 3,000. We could certainly, that, you know, that's what we had voted on. We certainly could up that just to give us a little more wiggle room, but I'm not sure we'll have a lot more um, other things coming up. Um, but it is, you know, we're, that's all, the 5,000 is, the three, the, whatever we have balanced for this year goes away. It's a one-year thing. Whatever, right. we ask for three and only spend 1750 to the state, we start over fresh at the next annual meeting. So we're now asking for 5,000. Right. Yeah, well, everything's gone up. I, yeah. I just wondered if we'd gotten the bill yet. I'd be yeah. interested to know how much. I'm very that, How much that costs. Right, and if it's over twelve fifty, I guess the town pays the the balance. But uh, huh. Carolyn didn't think it would be. So, I okay. hope not. let's hope not. Because it's not like we can pay them back, right? We have no. established we can't no. do that. Right. So, we okay. can't pay them out of the next fiscal year. No. Uh, no. no. No, it doesn't. Or take it out of the general fund, I guess not. Yeah, I, it has to come out of our administrative because the town and, votes on everything and, else. And, and and do you sign off on that? I mean, is it just a, a whole 
is it just a town hall thing or do you have any i had to sign off on the coalition bill as yeah. chair i had to approve that hopefully i'll get to approve this one but the town may just put it through oh, that's good um carolyn said please make sure to charge it to the cpa to the attorney's office because you know they've got enough of their own legal fees right. If we thought we'd have more legal, I did think should we up our 5,000 since it hasn't been voted on just to have more in there, mm -hmm. but hopefully we won't, um, you know, it, you can do up to 5%, so we could ask for 25,000. Right. Yeah, yeah <laughs> but, but it, it's hard to justify. A lot More people that, ask me in town meeting about the administrative account than any project. It's yeah. like, what are you doing with that money? What did you need $10,000 for? Right. You know. Yeah. Right. And, and 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 also, if uh, don't be don't be led down the road that it's not a standard operating procedure. If it if if the town wants a lawyer to review every single article, then it's it's the town foots the bill, not the CPA. They do. You know, don't don't be cowed into paying the bill. Yeah. But I wanted them to look at this grant agreement, and because yeah, I no, I I agree with that. I think that was a good thing, and I I think that. Uh, but now the grant agreement is written down. Right. So right. we can plagiarize it all we want, and <coughs> just go next year we go with a different grant agreement <coughs> and just change the names, change the dates, and the address, and everything is boilerplate, and everything is all all set. So yeah, I agree. Yeah. So, so I was going to ask. I was going to ask a, you know, the opinion of Amy's four-legged cons consultant. But it looked like your consultant got dragged out of the room. <laughs> oh yeah, I don't know. Every time I get on this, the dog decides to eat, or decides to make noise, or puts her 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 dog her head in my lap. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, she uh, does her own thing, right? I saw the bouncer forcibly remove her. <laughs> Four-legged member of the uh, finance committee. Yes. Um, the I am trying working with. Uh, well, I'm not working with. I've sent an email to the housing authority saying, "Can we please have a representative?" Richard Whitka's his term is up this year, and. Um, Hopefully he'll either renew and come or somebody else will. But I saw, I think a few people are running for that um, housing authority. So hopefully we'll get a new person that um, <clears throat> is on there that has time to come or, you know, um, will come. Because it'd be really nice to have that representative on the committee as well, actively on the committee. Who's running for moderator? No one so far, I don't think, unless no one more than I do. Mm -hmm. Write your name in, Andy. Yeah, I thought you were my friend. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anything I think else? Michelle would be good. Michelle. That's it. No, we need somebody else who always speaks up in town meeting and asks important, good questions. Oh yeah, it should be Shell then. <laughs> oh, I was thinking Edwin. Edwin. Oh, okay. Edwin's the man. I had no time running my farm. <laughs> Well, it's I think that's it, Mary. Thank you for running an excellent meeting. You really prepare and uh, yeah. much more entertaining than Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> I move we adjourn. You'll be getting your monthly subscription bill in the mail, Alan. <laughs> All right. I second Edwin's motion. All those in favor. Aye. Thank you, everyone, so much. Good night, everyone. Thanks, Mary. Good job.